Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. Um, let's wait a couple of minutes for folks to gather, and we'll get started. These tools should have the ability to put some waiting music or something. It doesn't feel uh, just silent waiting. Anyway, it's just me rambling now, Ben. All right, we'll wait another minute and then we'll get started. Someone have some jokes or some stuff they want to talk about, you know, now is the time. But be mindful, we're recorded. If I was good at telling jokes, I can tell you folks, you'll hear one every week. Just, uh, <laughs> I suck with jokes, so. <laughs> Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, nephew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let's get started. Thank you, Tal. Okay. I think uh, I have enough good energy right now. So hello, everyone. This is a uh, SIG1 meeting. We are uh, April 15, Monday, April 15. So today for the agenda, we'll um, discuss a little bit about the one, uh, ne the nephew day that will occur at uh, one summit. And then um, we'll go through our regular uh, working group updates. And that's all I have for today. So it seems to be a light agenda. I know Sana has something she wanted to talk about. Let me check a second. Um... I should have been ready. Okay. Um, all right. So hopefully she'll join. Uh, in the meantime, anyone else has some other um, topics they'd like to discuss today? All right. So let's get going. Um, so last week we did discuss the nephew day at one summit. We heard your feedback loud and clear. I cannot, Sana took the action to talk to Kendan. So once she'll join us, maybe she'll be able to share a bit more. Um, but so far, this is how the agenda looks like. Um, as you can see, it's been broken up. <laughs> it's weird because I heard last last week, we don't want to have six specific sessions. Well, looks like it's all broken up in six specific sessions. That said, uh, we have a couple of uh, talks scheduled for Silva which I think is pretty cool because I really want to see more uh, synergy happening there. And and I know that gentleman from Telefoni, Tele, uh, Telefon Italia uh, had done some, some trial. So definitely I recommend people to look at that one. And then in the uh, working group two, the Oran call uh, team, thank you. I think we came up with two talks. Um, that will fill in that half a minute, half an hour block. Uh, one to talk about um, a primer showing how Oran is using Nephew enablers, and then Oran integration lesson learned and challenges from release two and release three from our dear uh, Sagar. So with that, any question on the agenda? 
and and if not, I will open up for maybe a quick discussion on what do we like to see in the SIG one presentation in bird of feeder. But I'll, I'll I'll open up for questions maybe. None. Wow. All right. So that being so clear, from a SIG one standpoint, I haven't had a over. I need to talk. Please talk, Sana. It, indeed, your mic is not working. Okay, Sana, while you figure that out, um, I'll, uh, well, I won't make jokes because I just said I was bad at it. But we'll get back to you, Sana, as soon as uh, your mic uh, works. In the meantime, um, yes, Tim. So I just wanted to, we're talking about SIG 1, right? And so when you're ready, because I got a couple ideas that might really work out for the SIG 1 piece. Um, Please, yeah, so, that's what I'm oh, asking okay. for. Oh, okay, that's, okay. That's, I wasn't sure when to chime in. So so I think one is a presentation of this bird of feather, right? So the presentation is we kind of know what you, what you started. We kind of know what Release 3 is forming up to look like, right? You have those themes and use cases. So I think we need to present those just to get them some idea of what they're getting and, and a very basic understanding of that in terms of the, the use cases that they'll see, right? Uh, to be able to, to experience and release three. The other one is on the fur of the feather of uh, the work that uh, Karen is doing uh, and that team on, or whoever's doing that, on the network architecture. I think it's you, right? Yeah, the network architecture out of SIG1 where we come with the CI4. If we if we oh, have, right. I really think that's a bird of a feather that would be very beneficial to the entire community, let alone the people working on it, so that they can see that drill down through. I went through that again today. I'm like, going, yeah, yeah, we need to have a bird of a feather on this one because it's it's it, it's it's it actually does a very nice job of uh, of explaining the architecture of you. So I think those two Good. things would be very beneficial. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tim. The architecture is definitely top of mind. And it's funny you're mentioning it. I was working on it right before this call. Um, okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, other um, points? Do we have Sana? No, Sana is not there. All right. Well, we, we can... Um, anyway, the session is not a big session. It's half an hour, so... <laughs> These two topics is pretty much already good to fill in half an hour. It's probably worth, sorry, Karen here. Um, I think the release process and maybe some kind of, um, I know uh, Tal has spoken a little bit about doing some kind of continuous delivery model or <clears throat> getting more into more forward planning as opposed to kind of waiting until we're right up against a release before planning the next one. Be good to get ahead of things. So. You just need to be mindful. The release process, are you referring to how we make a few release or more? No, the no, release planning process, sorry. So the RX process, I guess. Oh, okay, yes, thank you, RX Alex, process. can you hear me now? Uh, yes, Sana, G give me one moment, Sana, please. Okay. Um, so you're talking about this, uh, Karen, just to ensure I'm... I mean, nine with you, this? Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah, that, and then I guess when we talk about it, or beyond sort of released, we're, we're, we're still talking about R3, and we'll probably end up talking about R3, R4, whenever we get to June or July or whenever. Um, it would be good if maybe we can kind of start building a backlog that sort of expands beyond just one release and, and sort of planning it out in a kind of a, a more sort yes. of... Yes, yes, that's, that's the intent. That's 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 where we want to go, absolutely. Um, um, roadmap. Yes, that's part of definitely an area that we want to go get to. Uh, we're not done yet, but you're you're right. This is a goal. Thank you. Hey, Sana, uh, please go ahead. Hey, Alexi, can you hear me now? Yes, you are audible. Oh, perfect. Okay, I was just switching my my audio settings. And meanwhile, I couldn't hear some of that, but I was just catching up on the notes. Uh, so there are two 
uh, demos that I want to bring, and I discussed them with um, Kandan. And Kandan said that the best place for these demos would be SIG1 because of the nature of these demos. Um, so one of the demos with some presentation, maybe taking 30 minutes time slot is basically the one um, that I have done with Red Hat LXE. You are aware of some of the context in that. Um, I'm just not finishing with what's done in the Red Hat. I'm trying to add something on the top for the Tosca part of it, where we can show the topology of the deployed network functions and what it means for us to have that kind of a modeling um, aspect on the top. And I'm pulling this together this week with Ara and another person within my team to basically work on that last bit. Uh, so it should be around 30 minutes for this one. And I think with the Karen's discussion on the work group two part, I think this would might be something relevant that would fit in in relation to that 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 part. And I will also circle back with Karen to show the what is the top part of that, uh, basically the Tosca part of that, uh, which is another few minutes. And of course, um, Alexi, uh, my goal is to also share some of the challenges that we experience in a production type deployment of Red Hat. Um, and, and, and how we feel uh, this could be useful for the community from our learnings, what we exchange there. Uh, so this, this, this demo is done. The travel tickets are all getting finalized um, from, from, from Terrace to share our learning and some of our partner ecosystem companies to come in and show that with us. Uh, this, is a, this is the second POC that is in progress right now. Me and Kandan are in a thread uh, basically with another company who is basically doing a lot of work in Gen AI. And my goal for that company is also to become onboarded with, uh, with this community, get introduced, and they, if they have something that they can spin up together very quickly with Nephew, I was going to give them an incentive to come and share that with the community, and that was something that me and Kandan brainstormed. So that's tentative, but another half an hour slot for that. Uh, that's also uh, our partner company, and I am driving them to, to join Nephew with Kandan. We have had two discussions on that in the past. And um, that's another one that we are trying to basically pull them in. Uh, let's keep that one as sensitive. And I'm working through this week to basically confirm their travels and their demo, uh, which should also be fitting in SIG1. OK. Jenny, I that, plus that's... nephew, they will do some something on this. We, we, I'm, I'm driving them to do something, which, which should be very interesting. OK. Um... Uh, but I'm a bit concerned. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, about the times. Okay. Yeah, we have two time slots, right? The bird of feather session and, and the presentation session, and that's pretty much all we have, right? We have that one hour. So, time wise, you know, the bird of feather session I think is already quite a jam pack with this kind of scope. So, do you think we can fit two demos in half hour? If you do, then I think it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Just I want to be mindful about. Okay, the time I know. I understand. I understand. Uh, let me let me discuss with Kandan. Maybe we keep the demo one here because this is kind of uh, more technical. The one with Red Hat and the one that I'm doing with Tosca. It's kind of very technical. Uh, and the other one, the nephew plus Gen AI, uh, I'll I'll find a way from Kandan to basically. Uh, shift this to something else if we, if we get the confirmation and opportunity with that provider to come and join us. We'll also basically do the announcement of them joining our community and, 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 and start to work with us. So if that can fit in some other track, uh, I'll brainstorm on that with Kandan. We can't fit two demos in half an hour. So uh, exactly. let's, let's keep it like that. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Thank you, Sana. Uh, and it was also Kandan's expectations for us as the SIG chairs to basically moderate the session and and cover some things like what's done in R2, what's happening in R3. I don't know if that's something that we are covering, Alexi, you and I, on, on, on this. Um, it, we're right now. A wrapper. Sorry? It's like a wrapper. You know how you yeah. intro the floor to the SIG one. So that's something we could do in 10 minutes, but I think that's something that he was expecting to keep the pattern consistent with how me and Kaushik used to do that in the past. Look, I, we, we have one hour overall. I mean, it's split it into half an hour, uh, but we could look at it in an hour. So we could have a third, 10 minute kind of a, 
talk on opening the floor kind of opening the floor that's what's done thinking reconnecting with the audience so this was done in our to here we are that's what we are planning for our three and then we open the floor to these demos and discussions just to just to intro to the room basically is kind of what you and I should do at that time Sweet. So let's uh, take the action, you and I, to firm up the agenda for these two. I think we, we, we anyway, we own this. So, so let's firm it up. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a lot of good content now. So. And let's Thank time you. the content. So we'll tell every presenter that that's much. That's how much time you have. So basically, slot this effectively, and and let's have a one-on-one -on -one elixir on that to make sure that we have a crisp agenda. And I also meet Kandan again later in the day. Uh, to see if he's good with the other six, if he could increase the time for our six. Uh, let, let me get some information from him as well. Thank you, Sana. Okay, um, Ravi. Uh, just a quick question on the on the agenda. If I remember, recollect from the TSC, those invited speakers were supposed to be external speakers, isn't it? I see them kind of, uh, I mean, it's it's more or less uh, in a few kind of yeah, presentation here there. Yeah, you're right. I, I didn't input this here, by the way. Huh? This is not my my doing. This is Kandan's doing. But you're oh, right. Okay. This is not external. Um, so uh, what do we Federico... mean by external speakers, Ravi? Like the people who are not in the community yet, but we are asking them to join the community? Yeah, I mean, some kind of external uh, perspective on if you are how they view it. Because I, I remember him explicitly mentioning a public call call, American, or some of these external speakers. So that's what caught my attention. So Could I, I use, maybe, even I feel maybe, what you're presenting. Yeah, maybe you're that's why Kandan was there. So I agree. Maybe that was Kandan was like excited about some of the demos that I was talking about because they have two new companies coming in. So the one that with, with the Tosca. Uh, Alexi, that one's a combination of the DZS. DZS is also a part of the community, but they never came up. Like they didn't contribute or they didn't participate in this. But this is the first time they're flying in to, to attend a nephew okay. summit. So we could put the name of their company. And the other one in the Gen AI is basically a new startup called Broadcom. Um, and me and Kandan are working with them in the background to basically join nephew. It's, it's also a startup that works a lot on the generative AI stuff. So, so we maybe yeah, could I, advise Kendan Sana if if the slot here that has been assigned to Sagar Bala and myself should rather be re, post, re re reassigned to these invited speaker that could be that Gen AI and DZS company. I I like okay the DZS is captured on that basically on that um. The, the, the POC that I'm bringing a demo for. So it's a combination of TELUS, Red Hat, and DZS all in one. That's one demo, 30 minutes. It, it, it should be captured in that. Um, so for this one, I do find this one very interesting as well. Okay. So let, let, anyway, so this I, I one think... would already be done in the one summit. Basically, Alexi, what I'm thinking is that we would have already covered this in one summit. Do you believe that the audience would not have seen the talks that we would have covered already in one summit. Uh, you mean these two points? Yeah, these ones. We have two yes. full tracks on this in the one summit as well, right? Agreed. So I, I still love it. Just, I'm very passionate about this part. But let's socialize with Kandan that are there any people who are basically attending just in a few summit who might not have seen it? Or so, could well, you bring in fresh so content? Like, what do we do? Hang on. Okay. So for the ORAN integration lesson learned, right? They will not have seen that in OED. There's just a demonstration for it. That was supposed to be, and you can put that with the bird of the feathers with uh, SIG 2 and 3, right? With the lessons learned, right? And then uh, so you say we could repurpose this. Well, it's they're going to see a demo in OED. I think there's like the demo that Sager has got. But like this is the exciting part. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the lessons learned that came from. It. So you the, can put the challenges that in or the difficulties, something that a developer community should know, right? Yes, that's right. And so that that deserves to be here. It can be in Sig two, Sig three, bird of a feather. I don't care. The other one okay. is really just showing the primer integration of how it uses the nephew pieces, right? And I don't think there is an O and E uh, 
correct me if I'm wrong, Alexis, this is you and Bala. Will they have seen that in ONE? Yeah, we, we do have a talk with uh, Sana. And yeah, there is one talk with me and Bala, and the other right, is with so, Satar and Alexi. So the exciting part will be captured on, on those tracks. My, my personal feeling is that. Okay. All right. That's fine. I just, I wanted to make sure that there's, you know, that, that, that lessons learned gets in there because that is indeed different than what in Sagar, that's the way Sagar presented it to me, was that this is Trust me. Trust me, Tim. <laughs> I'm working with Sagar on this. So trust me, it will be, it will be heard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And yeah. Alexi, in general, I think what, uh, Tim, uh, what Tim suggested, I kind of agree with that, is that when we are doing these presentations to the big audience in one summit, uh, that is an exciting aspect of things. We are kind of making these executives feel excited about technology, and that's at w another dimension. When we are bringing it in nephew day, we are trying to attract the developers community to come solve some problems with us that we are still facing. Like a lot of exciting stuff is done, but that's the challenges and next things that we need to work on. So we need to get them excited about the technical challenges. So that's another dimension of the things that we are covering and that should be the, that should be the goal. Okay. Um, Tal, My please hope... go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Sana. I was wrapping up on that thought. My hope with Kandan was that with this one summit, we could actually uh, attract more companies and more developers so that we could actually get more working people to the community. That should be like a sales pitch for us as well in that. I definitely agree. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I just uh, <clears throat> wanted to add uh, uh, from the discussions we had in uh, SIG2 and SIG3 about it. Um, so the, the structure of the schedule, I mean, the TSC basically gave us a free reign to do whatever we want with the rest of the schedule. Uh, we have a few assumptions here that, you know, probably because this is last minute, it's not, hasn't been part of the uh, schedule until very recently. We're probably not going to get a lot of outsiders into uh, this Nephew Day. So our thinking was to use the Nephew Day for us. Uh, so yeah, let's... You know, let's, absolutely, it's great that we have invited speakers. I would say even, you know, there's no reason to limit it to 30 minutes. If we feel that these presentations need more time, we can absolutely do that. Um, 15 minutes is really not a lot, but uh, especially if you want to add Q&A and discussion around it. Um, for the rest of the day, our suggestion from SIG2 and SIG3 was, we, we came up with a list of topics. Remember uh, uh, last week, Alexi, you went over it and had it on your own. It's annoyingly right now, it's inside the SIG automation meeting notes, <laughs> uh, but we can um, move it to an independent document. So the idea was, thank you for that. Yeah, so we have a, a list there, you can see in April 3. Right, so the idea was to move this to an independent document and uh, organize it just as a list uh, as a table actually with a column for votes. <laughs> and we'll see out of this long list of ideas that people had, what do we think would be the best use of our time there? Um, and ignore the structure of the meeting, birds of the feather and, and hours and SIG and all that and just have sessions. And uh, uh, for us, you know, and if there's a whiteboard possible or useful for some of the meetings that could be too. So, so really use it as work sessions, the same things we do and this meeting right now, weekly online, we can do them in person and be effective. Um, so the day could be divided into something that's more community oriented with presentations and then more uh, work oriented uh, sessions. Um, so a different structure than what we had in the last summit or maybe half and half. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for this, uh, Alexi. I'm, I'm loving your uh, live, live editing here. You're yeah, welcome. so I, that was an our, our idea. I, I wonder how you guys feel about it here. We thought we could uh, finalize it this week with some voting and then basically our schedule will be emergent from, from what, we, what we vote and what we feel is most important. Okay, so I, I'll um, <clears throat> finalize this so we can do some voting. I'll add, um, oh yeah, we already had some of the things captured in it. The feedback I heard, so I'll uh, I'll merge uh, the various uh, sorry I'm lost things together, and um, yeah okay I can take care of this um, to tidy to tidy to tidy up.
the 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 proposal and uh, and and we'll share um, later today, and then yeah, we can and, go into voting. And let's see a quick note to that. Uh, whatever ideas we have, of course, you are putting them together. Uh, let's just look at how much time we need for that. And when I circle back with Kandan on how many ideas we have, we are also looking at the overall agenda and some of our internal think-ups. So if we look at what we have received from the other six, I think we'll have a better assessment of what could go into this, this overall agenda. We might not have as many inputs from some of the other six. We haven't seen anything from SIG release at the moment. So we'll be able to shuffle things around and fit them in the day towards the end. Sounds good. Um, I, I put the link on the chat here. Everybody, uh, this is community, right? So welcome your contribution in there. If someone can play some magic as I speak uh, for the next couple of minutes, um, we'll tidy this up and, and Sana, to your point, we'll, we'll get the best agenda we can for this. At this point, this is more of a cross -sea kind of uh, work that we want to do here. So um, let's get this done uh, hopefully in a week. Can you get me access to the document you should? Uh, hopefully it is uh, publicly available. Um, I've uh, got no, no, no. Okay, no. Sorry, sorry. I don't know yeah, what my bad. My bad. My bad. No worries. Uh, now, now it's good. Publicly available. Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, Karen. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody else is planning on um, joining for the second day as well. It is the Linux Foundation Networking Developer Summit, I guess. Overall, as well, is there any? Possibility to use the second day for some of the more sort of deeper dive stuff that Tal was referring to, if it has to flow overflow. Uh, the second day is May 4th? Yes. Me. Yeah, there is no way it's happening. I... <laughs> Personally, I just changed all my bookings to May It's May 3rd, leave. actually. Yeah, no, I... Um... I wish I knew that a week ago, Karen. I'm sorry. So, so Nephew Day is happening on May 2nd or May 3rd? I'm again confused. May 2nd is what I think we were May about. Yeah, I'm a... flying back on May 2nd evening, actually, in, in my tentative mind. I haven't booked the ticket yet, but that, that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. May 2nd is a Thursday and May 3rd is a Friday. Okay. Yeah, in, in my situation, I'll fly back on May 2nd after finishing, of course, the full nephew day. I think because it's such a last minute change, I, I'll be happy if people even stay on Thursday, let alone Friday. I think people plan to come to ONE and uh, <laughs> ONE ends on Wednesday, right? So um, right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So the next day is for DNTF. I assume not a lot of people uh, plan to be there. So um, I, I think we have to take into account this is just kind of last minute. Um, We'll be happy that a lot of people show up, but it might be uh, less full than uh, last time. Karen, that was uh, something else. Yeah, I'd like sorry. To... No, I forgot to lower my hand. Uh, but I guess what I'm hearing is not a lot part... of people will be there on the Friday, so. Yeah, another quick part. Uh, I, I, maybe it's a question for Kandana and then go back and ask uh, we are actually pulling in all the DNTF people in the nephew day. So will there be anyone attending DNTF content anymore? Karen, if you are following that, are you going to attend DNTF at all for the CNF testing program and all the work that they were supposed to do in that session before this nephew day came in? I mean, I presume there's a bunch of other parallel events going on. Okay. Um, like o o ONAP and... Um... CNTI and Anukit and others will have their own okay. parallel presentations. Um, and I was assuming that they would continue on into the Friday. And that then, so for example, like I proposed that we and, and Liam and Istvan have put down sessions for things that we could discuss on the Friday if we wanted to use that as a mechanism for planning. Um, but if we haven't actually synchronized that with the Linux Foundation networking organization, I don't know. I don't, I don't, um, I, I, to me, I, I have think, heard from Kandan that we got only one day. So that was up until my last sync with Kandan last week. So I don't okay. know if we could even, if, even if we can shift that to another day, like 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 um, get two days basically for the nephew that, that I haven't heard. Okay, so I've, I've been to DNTF sessions before and I've been to um, nephew days before. I've never been to a, con, you know, a combination. combination of the two. 
Uh, and as far as I recall, for DNTF sessions, there's usually like some parallel activities ongoing. It's been a few <laughs> years since I was at one, but so. But if and, can, and can... nothing stops you from presenting the nephew stuff in the DNTF sessions anyway. It's kind mm. of very flexible as well, right? Their agenda. Yep. But Sana, given the amount of, I'm looking at the sessions that has been submitted to the DNTF, given the amount, I'm sure they're going to be scattered across the two days, right? So whatever yeah. we're going to do in our nephew day is going to be the conflicting agenda to the DNTF. And there are Maybe actually just nephew to talks. In, uh, just go ahead, to chime uh, in, uh, Alex is right. So, so apparently my understanding is the following is, I so Actually, nephew day is also actually part of the DNTF somehow, right? But we basically yeah. reserve the slot for us. But Friday, you could uh, extend or you could continue on some of the topics, even for nephew, although this is not reserved specifically for us. So in other words, so you could, so if people want and they feel it's useful, they could use Friday to do, to schedule some session. As already is done on the agenda, by the way. So you see there are three topics being requested. And if you get yeah. uh, assigned, you will get the meeting room and you have a discussion and stuff like that. So it is possible, I think. Now, it depends on the audience, but uh, I, everybody is free to, 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 to schedule this. Yeah, and I, I kind of um, agree with you, Hen, um, uh, Vim. Because we are paying for the DNTF attendance, right? And the, when you pay for that, Correct. then you're eligible to basically attend the two days. And essentially, if you are there, you could do anything you want. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we cannot right. stop anyone oh, from doing that. Uh, we cannot stop anyone from doing that. Right. I miss the fact we need to pay for DNTF. For the nephew this day, is, we also need to pay. It's a, yeah, it's a funny thing. Although our, our registration is paid off because of the speakers, but this we need to pay separately, $100 for yeah. the NPS. $100. Okay, we're okay. Uh, all right. I think, look, uh, I'm so lost. Um, I think it's... <laughs> Let's go back I to was gonna say. I was going to say, I think it's clear. It's definitely not clear to me, but it's. Uh, I, I'll figure it out for myself. Hopefully, uh, folks, you'll figure it out for yourself as well. Let's focus on the day one kind of May 2nd agenda, because that's when we have taken the full day and we, are, we want to give it a format of the previous nephew summits, kind of take the ownership of that day. Whatever falls on the DNTF, I think DNTF folks will manage that. Um, and it's fine. Nephew can be everywhere. We, 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 we are, of course, not controlling the DNTF agenda right now. I think some folks are. Um, Timu generally does, but I think that's his basically problem to, to, to look into that. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on. I, I think the goal is to firm up the agenda that we have here, and I think that's a a good enough understandable action item that I can uh, lead. Okay, folks. So let's go through uh, any other questions. Sorry, on the on the um, let's not talk about the DNTF because this is a uh, uh, losing me, but uh, any other yeah. question on the nephews uh, day at, at the DNTF that, that we can talk about? All right. So then, um, Sana, I think, it was, was that the topic you, you wanted to discuss, Sana? Exactly. I wanted to make sure that okay, I relate cool. to you the intro to the floor idea. And then, of course, the two demos that I had in my mind. And if you have inserted that somehow, then we'll continue to evolve things um, and form the agenda around that. OK. Um, OK, so sweet. All right, so uh, we'll take this as no more question on the topic. Uh, let's continue. Working group updates. Uh, let's go to uh, the team board and uh, team. If you'd like to uh, provide updates, that would be great. Uh, so there isn't really much updates. Again, we're still working on the cluster, create cluster for release three. So uh, there's another meeting scheduled, I believe, tomorrow uh, for that. Um, uh, they're trying to come to closure. Uh, you know, the big problem, not the problem, but the uh, the group is uh, considering how to create a generic, how to do this without 
uh, ORAN specific, O2 IMS specific aspects of it, and then have the O2 IMS specific aspects use the uh, more generic uh, nephew enablers. So that's the big uh, that's the big okay. task that they're working on. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're starting to identify uh, objectives and use cases for release for. So we'll be continuing that uh, ongoing as well. So we're trying to prepare for the next uh, set, whether it's release four or whatever, just next set of uh, objectives and uh, use cases. That's 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 good. Okay, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Tim. Any question for Tim? All right. Um, moving on to um, Karen. Yeah, um, updates. We had a good discussion last Friday with them who um, graciously agreed to present some of the... <clears throat> I put some user stories in there, so I, there is one assigned to them there, um, documenting the principles and trade-offs using the NFO modeling to date. Um, uh, he gave a good overview with the document he was creating um, on Friday, and the plan is to merge that in with the uh, the, the nephew documentation. So hopefully we'll see a PR at some point soon. Um, other than that, I had a rejig of this board slightly. Um, so I've just uh, started putting together, for example, the bottom item document, the current model design intent. I have a... Uh, a PR which I need to make, so I've got a work in progress on my um, on my fork. It's the same repository we're doing the um, we're doing the documentation on or the architecture documentation, but it's a different branch, and so I plan to merge or make a pull request for this in order that um, I can get feedback on it. So I'm going to do that today. Uh, That's then, cool. yeah. if you go back Thank to you. the uh, on the left hand side, then I've created a user story for documenting principles for alignment with SDOs. That's one of the discussion points that we've had in the group. Um, how do we want to work with SDOs? I haven't started working on that, it's just a placeholder. And then I'm I'm gonna work through we have a a uh, word document in which I've collected a, a number of uh, discussion points that we've had over the last few weeks, which I'm going to turn into um, items on this board. I only started working on it this morning, so that's basically where we're at. Uh, PR from Vim, hopefully coming in soon on the modeling principles of PR from me on the current model design intent, and some uh, new user stories to start tracking how we go forward. Thank you very much. Um, any question for Kieran? Thanks, I'm, I'm excited. I look forward to see this more uh, formalized in our doc. I think this is gonna be a, a Did we have something. links to that? Uh, can you include the links to that? It's, uh, everything is in the um, the GitHub board. I can share the link from uh, from um, from uh, Karen's uh, GitHub. I'll, uh, I'll generate a PR this afternoon and I'll uh, this evening, and I will um, make that available as well. There should be a generated preview of the docs from that. Oh, okay. I thought it was already there. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you. And this eventually could also be a good talk for the bird or feeder. Um, I know we have a lot. I'm just going to capture it just uh, for sake of, uh, uh, for the sake of not forgetting. All right. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, do we have Stephen? Yeah, we have. Great. Hey, Stephen, thank you for joining us. Is there any updates or, um, you know, work in progress on the SDK side that you could um, share with the team? Hello. Yes, you you're already Paul. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Good. Yeah, because my that, my audio was off for a while. Um, uh, so the there's a uh, there's a contributor, Dan from from Ericsson. He's he's working on the CLI front. So that was that currently this is a Kill builder wrapper. So we we're, okay. we're looking into uh, what exactly does it generate. 
uh, out of the CLI. There's something that, because he'd been off for a couple of weeks, so there's something he and I would have to talk about with the community. Okay. Uh, hopefully he's there to, for tomorrow's meeting. Uh, for me, I'm doing the um, C operator. Uh, so that's the thing that sits in the middle where um, the uh, vendors business logic would be hooked up with. Um, and that hopefully would be, well, we have a talk on, on ONE Summit, so it should be ready by ONE Summit. So let's, let's put it that way. Um, and, and I missed uh, the beginning. It's, what, what so is, there, that is a, so we, we have a, um, we have a runtime operator, if you will, Nephew, that requires us to A, process the Nephew uh, C out, and B, uh, as a hook point to, to connect with the business logic. The, um, from various different vendors, for for any vendors, that's that's the that's this operator is the thing that I'm working on, um, and um, probably will be ready uh, by um, ONE Summit because I'm supposed to demo that on the talk. Um, uh, the the experience of building this uh, uh, would hopefully give us a at least for our three a, 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 a what is what is the who's responsible for white type uh, uh, mapping. So, so what, what does the CLI, the tools do? What does the proxy do? And what would the business logic do? Um, so, so then, then, and hopefully give publishing the documents and a sample code um, to awesome. get folks on board. Yeah. That, that's cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Stephen, for the updates. Mm -hmm. That's very good to know. Mm -hmm. um, anyone has a question for Stephen? All right, uh, moving on to Subash. Uh, Subash, are you on the call? Yes, you are. If you're talking, Subash, we cannot hear you. We still cannot hear you. Yeah, no, no worries. I guess today is the day we've mic issues. You're not the first. Uh, take your time. In the meantime, I'm going to look at the notes. What we said last week. I said framework for ODU. Uh, I don't know that you shared uh, the user story. Oh, you don't have the meeting. Um, Sebastian, quick note. We, we discussed last week that you could share the user story you've been working on regarding the ODU bandwidth assurance. Um, I know working group two and uh, team asked and would be interested in that. I don't know if you if you haven't made any progress, then status quo. But if you can still share, I think uh, the sooner the better for the team. And I saw you populated the ML service assurance topic here, so thank you for that. And um, all right, well, I guess uh, this is good enough. Thank you for the <laughs> quick chat note, and uh, and I guess we'll go with uh, with that as an update. Thank you, Sebastian. And uh, finally, moving on to architecture and planning and scope. So yeah, I've been failing a little bit to build the uh, Rx scope. So as I said many times, I think we do have a tangible um, R3 pipeline and R3 proposal and even R3 scope. So from where I stand, I believe we're in a good position when it comes to are through deliverables by now, by, by now. Of course, not everything is approved, not everything is done, but with the amount of things that we have approved and we at least the amount of work that I'm seeing happening in working group two, I'm, I'm confident that there will be some key deliverables that will happen um, surrounding priority number three and four here. I can't talk about priority one and two here. I think um, this is more seek two related and the uh, user experience with the update we got from Steven. I'm also convinced we're gonna have something at least tangible and service assurance. Well, we can say whatever, Subash can talk. <laughs> so, but I'm hopeful we'll have, I know there is a lot of work that is already happening on the observability framework. So all in all, based on our top level priorities, I think we'll have some sort of a deliverables for each one of them. From a pure nephew standpoint, I think we'll, we'll 
we're also in a good shape to have these six deliverables, at least the first five, I'm pretty sure. Um, target component architecture, I'm going to go there in a minute. Schema registry with what um, Karen and the team has been doing, I'm pretty sure we're, we're going to be in a good shape. Roadmap, that's uh, count on me, we're going to be in a good shape, but this is uh, something I need to start doing, like what is Nephew beyond R3? Uh, user stories, sequence diagram. Uh, for all the user stories approved, we already have some sequence diagram and some kind of understanding. So we have the data. It's uh, more being able in that uh, deliverable to marshal that data and making it consumable for external uh, people out of Nephew. And then the user journey. We haven't done a lot of work on this. Uh, the C4 model is helping a bit. There is some of the contribution that were done initially by um, uh, Bernard from DT that I want to, uh, you know, dust off a bit. But all in all, what I'm trying to say is I think we're not in so much of a bad shape for R3, which um, gives me um, hope. Any question on R3 scope here? Any one reading this differently. All right, so scope wise, I'm gonna let, oh, go ahead, Karen. I don't know if it's scope related, but do we have an R3 date? Come, come again? Do we have a date for R3? Uh, no, I well, not that I'm aware of, um, but this team should be aware. I. I cannot represent you folks at the TSC because it conflicts with my personal uh, calendar or my professional calendar. So I, I, I'm, I've never been able to attend TSC. And because of that, I'm not able to take that action to them. I don't know if someone give can me, update Give us. me the action. I have promised Kandan to attend the meeting. Since he moved this to 9 a.m. for me, um, I will be attending these regularly, Alexi. Thank you. So, so Karen, um, Sana has the action. We'll update you probably next week or. I'll uh, be at the TSC as well anyway. So but, um, I think it'd be good okay. if we have a if we have a scope for our three, it would be also good to know when we're hoping to deliver the scope by. Yeah, but as we said yeah. many times, right? Our scope is not set in stone. It might be a rolling scope. So yeah, yeah. Wh yeah. whatever is the date, we'll I think we're in, what I'm trying to say is I think we're in a good shape, nephew wise, in terms of content for our three now is how we're going to be able to shape it. Okay. Yeah, Alexia, I keep hearing it again and again that this, um, uh, from requirements perspective, we are kind of well organized, structured, and we are doing good work in that. But from the developer's perspective, um, SIG2 is still not fully ramped up. And I think that's what determines the, the what, what we can accomplish in every release. And we also discussed that with DSC, I think last time when I presented, that we are constantly working in an agile way, but I think the timelines for the R2 and R3 are kind of only for the external world, uh, for the press releases, for for the external communication. And Kandan said that I would only hope that there is some theme that we can capture every time. So just to keep it in mind, that's how our um, evolution would continue to happen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hey guys, so could I suggest something? Right. Please go ahead, Tim. All right. So from a TSC perspective, you know they we they've already said you know um, there are going to be two releases a year. Well, we said you know May, June, whatever it was, November. We kind of have that. Yeah, right. every every six months. That's right. Tim. Yeah. All right. All right. So so the question will be from a TSC perspective. Well, I'm sitting back there. I'm going to say. Okay, so it's it's uh it's it's the end of June. Is June thirtieth is gonna be the release two day. Or release three day, I'm sorry. And then November thirtieth is gonna be the release four day. Tell me that I'm gonna say as a TSC says, tell me what I get at that date. And I think that's incumbent on the SIG two, SIG three, right, to look at this group of things that you've got here and say, You get this, this and that. And the rest of it will just move into backlog if that's the date. Now, this is all the things that we think we got ready. You want to then give the TSC to say, if you really want this extra stuff, 
right? Because we got to prioritize. If you want this other stuff, man, maybe it's a July date or an August date. But I, I don't think, you know, what I'm seeing right now is that we're going to be batting this ball into each other's courts that nothing ever gets resolved, right? And I think maybe the best way of doing this is make the assumption that we're on a June 30th, November 30th uh, cycle. Schedule, and we, right. and we'll Schedule, and, and if you, and we'll tell them what they get in that based upon this and what they don't get. And then they say, no, that's not good enough. I want that with you. Well, okay, then it'll, then it'll be this day. I mean, it's just normal give and take of development, right? But I, I just don't think you got to go up. If you just go up and ask a question, they're going to say June 30th, then we're going to go back to the other guys and say, well, you can't have this. Then we'll go back up to them. They'll say, well, I want that. And we'll go back. You know, so just stuff all uh, that. I think, I think, Tim, for some of these ideas, I'm sorry, Karen, um, I'll make a quick comment uh, and then go to force your, you have raised hand. I think with some of these discussions back and forth, we agreed last time um, that the release dates are going to be every six months. It's for the external communication. Like you said, if it's June 30th, that's what it is. And what, and we also decided in one of our RX scope and planning meetings that we'll continue to work iteratively between the six, like through whatever process we are working at the moment. And whatever is done by that date is what we will communicate externally. So, we we kind of we are at peace with this model kind of we are moving with that and i know there isn't a lot of effective communication between sec2 and sec1 saying that sec2 has already committed to do x y and z and by june 30th they will deliver x y and z that's kind of still a rolling um, progress on their side they don't know what they will deliver by june 30th but whatever it is we'll put it we'll give it a theme do the external communication but between the two six we are constantly working together in an agile way. So, so the June 30th is kind of very irrelevant to, to, to this, this, this way of working between the two things, is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I have also opinions, but I... I uh, Karen, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I'm not I'm entirely sure what my point was going to be. I think I hadn't realized June 30th was selected as a date, so that, that's good to know. Um, and I guess, I mean, at least external people looking in do kind of wonder when new features are coming and so on and so forth. So having a date to point them at the R3 release is good. Um, but I also feel the, the, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of align up with Tim. I think having a time-based release process and regular cadence and, and, and things like that sound really good. And if we're in that cycle and everybody's agreed that that's the way we're going, then I think that's really cool. I'll leave it at that. Right. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> so that has to do a little bit with the planning. I don't know exactly the action to take here. I think this is more of a TSC discussion. So. I'll um, see if I can make it to the TSC, uh, but else I'll rely on, on, on the TSC member on the call here to help me drag this forward, as I believe this is not just a SIG one thing, but um, I, I definitely want to own this as well. So don't get my comment as me not willing to own this. It's just if I can't be at the meeting, I can't drive uh, the discussion. I will, I will own this, Alexi. I happen to be the TSC vice chair as well, who has been super absent in the TSC meeting, but I will, I, I'll take care of this. Sweet. All right. Thank you, yeah. So could could we possibly for the next TSC meeting, assuming it's June thirtieth, is and and I, and I think that's really a Cal Bala and 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 when uh, you know uh, discussion their teams, is there ability to say you know we go through that list that you have? Could is there ability to say yeah we have confidence? I don't give not be one hundred percent or whatever. We have confidence that this is what this would look like in, in June. Is that possible to do? Because I think that gives TSC information that they can go. Um, I, I can do that for the SIG1 deliverables, absolutely. I, I need help from the various folks on your team for, for these Yeah, that's why I was mentioning women. Um, Tal has his salaries. Yeah, we, we can't do it yet, but we, uh, we've we organized teams and every team has, you know, its own uh, constitution, I would say. Uh, 
I think once we do triage and have a good idea of what work is ahead of us and what we're actually doing per team, then we'll be able to say something with some degree of confidence over what that team can deliver. Um, not yet. I would say not yet. We, we need to do that initial triage first. I think it could be that some teams are more ahead than others. I, I can't say there's, there's just a lot of different topics. Yeah, that's fair. We just yeah. schedule the teams. So I think it's fair that there's a little bit of a talking time for, for the teams to understand where they are and what they can do. A whim? Yeah, I mean, we have to be realistic, uh, I think, everyone, right? See, we are at the moment mid of April. Okay. I don't think we have done lots of work in R3, right? So there will be very little stuff. That will happen. Just be, because if you look to the other releases, right, we were busy at least uh, five months before we delivered anything. At least. So, yeah. I, I, so you have I, to be I, realistic, I, right? Even we have formed the teams, let's not expect miracles, right? It's not that I, the, the people are not 100% allocated on this thing, right? So open source requires effort. So I think if you, if I would, my honest view, if you look to the list, I think 50% is not going to happen at least. But I think that's okay. When, or, it, no, no, sure. Different. But I think I, I, we just have to be realistic between ourselves, right? Let's say June yeah. 30. I was always of the opinion, the fact that we still ask the question, when is the release? is for me a bit weird because we always said we do two releases a year, right? So and put a stick in the ground, right? And we deliver whatever is available, right? And But let's be honest. We are, we basically have two months. Yeah, I think we, we're all on the same page here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so any other comments on, on this? Yeah, I, I just want to add to that. You know, it, it's fine if we do 50% or less. And I, you know, for all of us, I think we've, we've done a lot of progress in this, cycle <laughs> right even if we won't have uh, a lot of code to show for it i think our design and planning has matured quite a bit i'm 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 personally feel confident and, and happy with the progress we've been making uh even if this release might not be you know earth shattering in terms of features uh, if we're strategic about it we might still be able to deliver impressive pocs that show kind of our intent for the future so um, we, we can try to prioritize something like that to show as much as we can, just showcasing ability, even if we don't have, you know, completely new and, and um, uh, you know, impressive uh, uh, new use cases, right? Even just showing a little bit of ORAM, for example, I think everybody agrees would be uh, deliver a strong message, I think, to uh, other communities. So yeah, I'm, and, I'm feeling and, okay. Excellent. And, and Dol, to your point, um, I think sometimes showing new use cases is not as critical as showing that whatever use case we built in the previous release, we hardened it and we made it more production ready. So if you can see the uh, R3 uh, priorities, what we asked for a high priority item was to be, basically make it work on the real um, K8 clusters. It came out of our, our POC experience. So whatever is done, if it is kind of more production ready, that's a very good team if that's what we could do in in r3 so i think we are in good shape with that i i would personally be very careful with the word production ready <laughs> yeah. um, uh, kind of make it softer i don't know what the software version is. closer to because real. even, even <laughs> sarah for this one we don't even have an environment on which we can do it right that's no, no, no. I meant if you took care of the security aspect of things, if you took care of some of the underlying critical aspects in R2, and if you were able to accomplish that, we would say that those were the things that actually helped us take a step closer to production. I don't know what's the right word, but, but, for, what but I'm first of all, I, I, good enough things. But for me, the first of all, I think that the items that you now are uh, discussing haven't even been made visible to the team. As this was this was an example, Vim. This was an example. So yeah, whatever correct, but are see, the backup Sarah, let's items be realistic. in R2? Let's be, let's be realistic, right? We are two months away. The fact that you're now throwing new things 
on the topic is no, for me. I'm not even throwing it, Vim. You didn't get it right. I was saying as an example. So if you, you, if, if whatever is your current board in R2, if you were able to take care of some of the non-exciting things like the, like sure. we call it the urgent things, but if those urgent things were met and they make the product closer to making it real, then that's a good enough theme for R2. I meant it in that very abstract way. You get it? Yeah, but we, yeah. I mean, we have, we, at the moment, we didn't start on any real topic, right? We have just, uh, there is not real work done at the moment, okay? That's the state we are at. Just to be clear. Okay. Okay. We have done lots of discussions on what we can do, but we have to, to uh, there is lots of work uh, on the plate. And I think at the moment we are going in various directions, which means that on every topic you do way less. Hey, folks, I'm um, sorry. Um, I let the good discussion take the time away from me. So we're a minute past the hour. Um, good discussion on scope and planning. I think we need uh, TSC to chime in here a little bit. Uh, I think this is a little bit in SIG one, but I hope that it's uh, quite ex extensively as well as part of um, TSC to help uh, address this. From my standpoint, the expectations of what we can do are very clear. Uh, we just need to set them straight. So um, I didn't get to discuss architecture, although um, Kieran has updated the PR with a couple of uh, fixes. I'm planning an update as well, so architecture should be good. Can we for can we do the architecture time. discussion, Alexi, on Friday? Because I have some inputs to the architecture as well. Yeah, yeah, we will. Uh, I'm wrapping okay. it up right now. The call is okay. um, good. now uh, over. If you have something you'd like to add, Tim, uh, please uh, shoot a message on Slack. Happy to organize that for either a Friday call or next Monday call. With that, I apologize for taking two extra minutes of your day and uh, wish you a good rest of your Monday. And thank you for the good call. Cheers all. Thanks, folks. Have a good day. Bye.